you want to have like an impromptu game of that where we just go through triggers just to give some people ideas because every industry is going to use different triggers based on your products you're going to know which ones if you look at your crm if you look at those minutes you've booked but just get people thinking about some changes that might be happening that could lead us to target someone in a sequence so do you want to just run through set triggers till we run out let's do it let's see what we can do alex you're going first <laughs> Uh, well, do I get to pick one that's on here? Headcount? No, hired? you're not allowed any of the no, ones here. Right. In fact, I'm going to fill the screen. Okay. Uh, I one. would say um, I would look at like Glassdoor reviews or any type of reviews uh, site and look at actually what people are complaining about. And if that is something that you can help with, that's a pretty solid trigger. Tom? I like that. I go uh, closed lost opportunities in your CRM in the last 18 months. Another great trigger, another reason to put someone in a sequence. I'm going to go for very similar to yours, Alex, but G2 reviews. If you're selling to software companies and they're getting negative reviews for something you can help them solve, support wait time, bugs, get those G2 reviews as a trigger, negative or positive. Um, I guess I just flip side of that with Tom is take a look at all your close one opportunities and take a look at like what is the number one priority or number one pain point or business initiative and just tack onto that and use that for relevance in your messaging. Nice. Tom, you're not running dry yet, are you? No, no, no. I would go for uh, I would go for any company that you see on a case study, testimonial, or famous customers for any of your competitors. Love that. Uh, especially if you've got some real good landmines that you yep. know that those co competitors aren't servicing the customers well. If you have people switch in, look for the reasons that they're switching. And don't maybe say, hey, I know you're using this company. You can lead with those pain points that their the, the lack of functionality or service might not deliver. And I'm not buying time here, I promise. A lot of people took, we already talked about headcount increase. A lot of people don't realize you can use the negative things as well, the opposite of that. So if they've had layoffs, headcount reduction, or any high employee turnover, depending on what you do, that could be a great reason to reach out as well. Um, I would go through um, anything as far as like M&A or expansion. So if you're going to open up new offices in new cities or in new um, cities, states, countries, whatever it is, um, if you're buying companies, um, yes, when you do M&A, there's often consolidation, but that opens up a whole new level of junk that happens. So yeah. there's all kinds of opportunities. Those, those are some good ones. How all about right. if, you're, if you're a venture-backed or PE-backed company, how about any companies that are at all in the portfolio or connected to anyone that's invested in your company. If someone's invested in you and they believe in your company, then they are more likely to make an introduction because they think you can help other businesses in their portfolio. Ooh, that's a good one. And uh, we could keep going all day here. And I, I, I recognize that I probably bit off more like a tree of this one. So I'm going to do one more. <laughs> if you I sell like any kind stuff. of marketing outbound uh, at marketing solution, whether it's an agency, or design services, and you see someone's either rebranded or changed their website or made a logo change, there's going to be great opportunities to jump on that to help amplify their new brand or help them with those changes. But Tom, you shared ahead of time of yep. how you might actually, you know, tactically deliver on a sequence. Can you walk us through what this this looks like and when you might use it? Yep, yep. So um, I've got I've got three. Uh, do you do you mind going back one slide? I'll go I'll go through them real quick. Oh, whoops. Yep. There you go. Cool. So I've got three, depending on what we're talking about. So if it's very cold um, and I don't have one of these triggers we're talking about, uh, I'm going to hit them with a pretty standard cold sequence. I think it's 13 steps. Uh, the, the TLDR here is that it's multi-step. It's multi-vehicle, meaning there's email, there's phone call, there's voicemail, there's LinkedIn because my buyers are there, uh, and there's a video. And what I'm really focusing on is in each part of the sequence, I'm focusing on different problems. So if I imagine that my buyer might have three problems that I can solve, I find that to be typically true. There's, there's a few different problems. I want my first part of the sequence to be about one problem, the second one to poke at a, another one, and the third to poke at a final one. So I'm going you know, pretty hard into uh, each of these and, and multi-touch. As we go to the second sequence, uh, you'll notice that it's shorter. It's used as a trigger. This is an example just of someone that was a job changer, former customer, landed at a new company, because we have some familiarity, uh, I'm shortening it up. I'm getting more targeted. I'm not spending as much time and as many touches because I'm more likely to get a response on some of these first few. But you'll see there's still emails, calls, LinkedIn, maybe a video in there. So I'm still being multi-vehicle. And then if we get to the third one, Will, 
Um, I call this the stovetop because in uh, I'm an uh, I'm Italian, and so on Sundays in the Italian culture, grandma's by the stove. She's cooking up the sauce. Uh, it's going all day long, the Sunday sauce. And so what I want to do is keep people warm. So for anyone that I lose a deal with, anyone that, you know, no show is an opportunity, anyone that's like, that was warm and didn't become a customer, I'm putting them in this sequence. And once every 30 days, I'm going to get in touch with them. And it's not going to be about, hey, will you take a meeting with me, Will? It's going to be like, hey, Will, I saw this third party report from Salesforce about X or, you know, Gartner put out top, things that CISOs should care about in 2024, thought this would be helpful based on some of our conversations. Let me know if I can help with anything else. And you probably won't get much on the first one on this, but after three, six, nine months of doing this, adding value, making deposits without looking for a withdrawal, you're going to start to get people that respond and say, wow, the timing's good now. Thanks for staying in touch. We just had an exec meeting and I thought of you. Let's set up a, a call. And that happens all the time now that I've been doing it for a while. So I just went off there for a second. Man, that was, you went off, but in a good way. Uh, I learned about your, your heritage and, you know, <laughs> having meatballs on Sundays, right? Love the slow top lead. You even waved in a couple more triggers there in a way. You said lead, lead to you. Matt, I've been working with, but didn't buy or deals that might be lost a while in the past. Keep them warm, 100%. And that deposit as well, chef's kiss as they might, your, your, your grandma might, might <laughs> I don't know, the pigeon thing. We've got a couple of questions here. Uh, just based on what we just shared on the screen, Brad was like, uh, you, you mentioned that there's a couple of steps in there for bump emails. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an example of what one of those might look like? Yeah. Uh, so the, the basic example of a bump is you reply to the first email that you sent and a, a basic one might just be like, Hey, Hey, Will, any thoughts on the above? I like to add a little bit of color there. And so if I have a bit of research, hopefully I've done a little research and I, uh, or have a trigger, I can use that. And I might say, Hey, Will, Based on, uh, you know, the, the post I saw about you hiring 10 SDRs, dot, 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 any feedback on the above just goes like shows that I gave like at least like, you know, a little bit of a shit about like the prospect and yeah. still only takes me 30 seconds to remember that because I already did the research. So that's uh, that's what I mean by a bump. Love it. I like that you didn't just say bubbling this up or bumping this up. You, you re restate the context. One thing you also mentioned, uh, which I really liked, is not only did everyone see that you know there were so many different channels that you were mixing up in that, you mentioned that you're going to hit on a different problem in each of the emails as well. I assume to try and give yourself the best chance of resonating there. How might you think about? Because a lot of the time, when us as sellers get into sales uh, and we join a company, they give us a bunch of product training, but they never give us the problem training. Mm -hmm. How might you think about breaking out those problems or figuring out which problems are worth talking about in your outbound sequences? Yeah, I mean, I, I run people through an exercise. I've shared this on the Sell Better, and I think they have a, a we could we could resurface a resource. But um, uh, essentially, what I what I do is is uh, you know think about well, if you know what the problems are uh, that the, that your customers have, then you can you can line those out. If people don't know what they are, especially if it's like early stage company and you're still figuring that out, I would ask customers. Uh, you might go to G two if you have reviews on there. You might go back to call recordings of deals that have closed or things like that. You might ask your CEO or sales leader if you have one uh, around like what, what, who are we, what problems are we solving? And, um, you know, if you're an established company, it should be pretty obvious. And if you're at a very early startup, then you might need to take some educated guesses and, um, and, and start to line those out. And my, my guess is that if you're, focusing on the problem and you're prospecting and not getting responses, um, it could be that you haven't chosen a specific or good enough problem and you might need to keep like refining what that is.